Not seeing anything of note. Ah, there we go. More crumpled pages. John Russell opened his eyes and saw them. The stars, twinkling as if he were laying on the grass in his family's yard in Massachusetts. Even though that place was a million miles away, no, he blinked the sleep from his eyes looking through the carbon-reinforced safety glass of the space station Archimedes. Yes, he was a long way from home, but the future needed him. <laughs> it's a space story. John Russell's head swam. He felt incredibly drunk, despite not having touched a drop in hours. He vomited onto his feet, his bare feet. He started... He stared for a moment, processing his sick, flecked toenails, scanning up his bare shins, bare knees. He was completely naked. He looked up and met the eyes of a gorgeous blonde woman wearing a tight polymer fiber tunic. Then, the fabric that st uh, strained at the seams to that strained at the seams to contain her generous bosom was emblazoned with the phrase matter transference operator the one he passed out john russell had crossed the gap the gap in time only messages has has passed beofer but now am man they needed him now more than ever changing the past was no longer good enough the instructions from the council had been clear what to procure what to construct from it how to assem how to sm lebay it so he made the machine, how to transport him bodily across time, and now he stood there on the bridge of the Starg ship, Archimedes, comma, end, the, of the vessel, because only he who had saved the Predisnet's life twice before a eh, could helm the naive crew to their destiny, the fate of the galaxy. <laughs> so he has apparently saved the president's life twice before, and has to, uh, save the galaxy. <laughs> A, a ambitious story, to be sure. I am biting my nails for the sequel. Back to the basics. Sent back in time to Dallas 1963 again? You can do better. What if JFK wasn't JFK? JFK present US plus USSR coalition? Chinese? Japanese? Lebanese? Paradox results in JFK death being desired outcome. Grassy Knoll steamrolled? <laughs> I love his ideas. <laughs> JFK, poisoned, kidnapped, injured. State of emergency in Dallas cancels motorcade. All of his, he just, he really likes this topic of JFK. Oh, and this is something completely different. Talking about a Pioneer disc player. A laser disc slash compact disc player. They say that a jack-of-all-trades is a master of none. I have to disagree. Mastery is not a question of specialization, but sureness of purpose and dedication to craft. If you happen to be in the market for a combination LDCD player, you'll be glad to know that Pioneer seems to share this particular... And then it trails off. So he is definitely an artist, even when it comes to, apparently, CD reviews or CD player reviews. Interesting, so... Ah, uh, Katie's father. Our father is a writer. That is absolutely for sure. It, he tries very, very hard, even though it can sometimes be a little, uh, little foolish. Oh, these paisley chairs. Ugh. I mean, oh, this wallpaper is definitely on the walls. Fresh. I was a teenage drag queen. True stories. The male gaze and how to subvert it. Man, this uh, this type setting that they're doing here, this is so fresh. I love it. It's definitely 90s. Fresh. <laughs> Sarah Holst is not gathering moss. She's a rolling stone. Oh, I just I took the lid. I meant to open the. Nope. Go away, lid. Dad's second book. Ah! No, come back, second book. The Accidental Pariah. What a, uh, what a bold name. A message from our future saved the president's life once, but within the next 24 hours there will be another attempt and the lines of communication are down. Compelling, a thriller worth its salt. 
Oh, oh, dad. Really loves those political thrillers. A Stranger Under My Roof by Dr. Eliza Medina. Never had such a good conversation with my daughter. Okay, so this is a teen self-help book using pediatric psychology. But I don't know if there's any relevance between the author or any of these pieces and what we're dealing with right now, so I'm just going to put it back. Nothing that I can put together right now. Oh, there we go. I want that paper. Oh, oh there's a uh, 0451. That looks like exactly the code that we need. Dear Terrence, David asked me to write you regarding the reviews you've been submitting the last few months. Frankly, they're becoming more trouble than they're worth from an editing standpoint. There's a word limit. It's your job to stay under it, not mine to cut back to it. Even then, it's becoming harder and harder to weed out the tangents and non-sequiturs from our, the usable copy without heavy rewrites. The readers of the home theater aficionado want to hear about the quality and value of the hardware, not ruminations on your childhood. If it were up to me, I wouldn't be writing this letter. I'd just be cutting you loose. There's tons of guys half your age who would take half your rate and write stuff I could actually use. But David's known you for a long time, and he's the boss, so I'm giving you one more shot on this say-so. You should write him a nice note, thanking him for his patience and generosity. Look through your old stuff, and start submitting reviews like that again. Then everybody will be happy. Brent Kurtwood, Reviews Editor, Home Theater Aficionado Magazine. And that's labeled from November 1st of last year. So that hasn't been touched. It's kind of been left in this giant library of just pristine books. Okay, 0451. Apparently things are not going well with his job. But that also means because he had one more shot, if he didn't make that shot, then he wouldn't be writing a review like this in the paper. So that date, November, is kind of touchy. That worries me. Okay, if I remember right, it was 0451. Come on, who resets the lock every time they use it? Someone who's paranoid, that's who. Dear Mr. Mason, please find and close your original document and a typed copy for your records. The notarized copy has been filed at our offices. Thank you for entrusting our firm with this important matter. What's the important matter? Uh-oh, Oscar Mason, will and testament. I declare that I am a lifelong resident of Boone County, unmarried and have no children. I have no outstanding debts to my name, to any creditors living or dead. I hereby bequeath every item of value of which I may, may die possessed. Oh no, he's dying possessed! Oh dear. So this is all going directly to his nephew, but what's the tie between the nephew and the uncle? And in what circumstances is, like, someone like Katie, who we're playing as, not familiar with their uncle's house? Which would make this feel like, because obviously she's not familiar with the house, or she would know what the heck's going on with this place. Um, maybe there's something on the next page. Whoa! Oh, okay. So this is what was just written on this page. So this was in the 13th of August, 1973, two years before I was born. But when did... Oh. I want to go see, since I've kind of got this room pretty down packed, especially if I just hit that. Unless there's something behind this painting. No. No, there's not. But it was worth a try. So if that will and testament was written in 1973, then when was this obituary written? So he died 60, which is 30 years after this, 1993. Okay. So he wrote that will and testament when he was 40, which is a weird time to write something, except that he owned this giant house that he'd lived in for his whole life. And why did he give it to his nephew? They must have been close in some way, but no way that I would know of. 
especially since it was two years before I, Katie, me was born. VHS tapes. Oh, let's turn the light on here. Oop, no light. Candles. Kind of worried because this house is laid out almost exactly the same as like every horror game house between Silent Hill, uh, Luigi's Mansion, Eternal Darkness, like all of them. They all have that same layout. Fizz right, ginger ale. Contains less than 2% of the US RDA of protein. Good for it. It's a pretty in. Oh, oh dear. Oh. Sorry. Making a mess again. It's hard to not make a mess in this game. Oh, oh, wow. Yeah, we moved. I guess we didn't move that far. So this is coming from New York. Hi Fi Aficionado Magazine. Not the same magazine. So we were in Forest Grove. Now we're in Boone County. I guess it's not too far. Which is why the... So they've always lived in Oregon. How have they not visited their uncle if they've always been in Oregon? Like, I don't know. Maybe those cities aren't super close to each other. I know I don't visit my relatives in Spokane and I live in Seattle, so... You know, could happen. Please find a Pioneer CD unit with remote and cables. We need a half-page review for the October issue. Oh, so maybe... If this is Hi-Fi Aficionado Magazine, maybe Terry didn't... Maybe Terry, like, got a new job with a new group. Severe weather warning. That's not severe weather. This TV's full of lies. Oh, no! This is a horrible horror game! No! Okay, I need the light. Ooh! I can crouch? X-Files Season 1. The Dark Crystal. And 2001. Ooh, double feature. It's a good VHS. This highlighter is mine now. Ooh, a pin. Bratmobile. Found the Heavens to Betsy pin. This is a Bratmobile pin. Because we're the biggest Riot Girl fans ever! Welcome to Oregon! Oh my gosh, it's a pillow fort! I want to go in the pillow fort! I'm reading haunting stories underneath our pillow forts. This is an awesome person. Whoever built this deserve a medal of some sort. I want to jump. The game doesn't let me jump, and I kind of like that at the same time. Because if I were to jump, I would just be jumping around my own house all over the place. And that wouldn't make any sense at all. Terry, hey man, how have you been? I know you're a published author and everything now, but my editor at Hi-Fi Aficionado has too much review work to go around. And he's looking for another freelance. I mean, naturally, I, I thought of you. You were saying in your cast letter how much of a pain it's been trying to find a publisher for your latest work of literature. And writing stereo reviews is dead simple. You know, sit at home with a glass of scotch, listen to some records, and write up how it sounds. And then get paid. I've included some of the issues of the mag to use as examples if you're interested. Send some samples to the editor and tell him your old colleague, uh, your old college enom. What is that? Crom? Knom? Tell your old college guy, Mike, sent you. Here's the address. David Warning, just do it. Do it, Mike. This, this is Mike. Thanks, Mike. Oh, let's do... Let's try side B. I like Girl Squad. I think that's the same song. 
Uh oh, sticky notes. Oh, Dad thought this might help because Sam's not feeling feeling lonely. Oh, what a strange note to give to your daughter. <laughs> that would make that would explain why Sam is uh. Feeling. Oh, she'll tell me. First moment you see someone, it's like they have a big gold star around them, and you have to get to know them. Well, there's this girl. I think she's a senior. She's usually dressed kind of punk. But sometimes I see her in this, like, army uniform. And she's always drawing in this notebook, looking so intense. I had no idea how I would ever, like, have an excuse to talk to her. Till I noticed she and her friends hang out and play Street Fighter at the 7-Eleven every day after school. I have to say these clues are adding up a little bit. Oh. Matchbooks always have clues. This is mystery solving 101. Oh, this matchbook doesn't have anything! Oh. That doesn't tell me where anyone's been or what hotel they've been sleeping at. This mystery is balls. But candles! That's a video game classic. We gotta order the candles in the right way and then they'll light up and... yeah, we all know how this goes. Oh, oh crap. The wood's not in the right place. Very interesting. So, I mean, as I was saying, I mean, we have this girl who's having issues making friends. She's obviously found someone... Uh... Lorena? Lo La Lonnie. Lonnie, that's her name. Who she's, she's really excited to hang out with. But her being a kind of a loner sometimes would definitely explain her obsession with hauntings and poltergeists. Oh, closet. 